Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be looking at old, lost and forgotten techniques released by the Kodokan themselves. I will link it in the description below, of course, and we're going to be discussing them. So from looking at them, they're either something a little bit new or a variation of a technique that we already have. So it's not too drastic. However, those variations can always make a comeback and also be a very surprising factor since the level of competition is very high. So this is the title. It is Kieta Waza and Wasu Rareta Waza, meaning lost techniques and forgotten techniques. So the first technique that we're going to be diving into is none other than Seoe Otoshi. This picture from 1928 you can see, so he is hooking the arm uh, much like a shoulder throw, but you can see he's reaching around his waist to grab the opponent's belt. And from there, he just cuts down and drops them. So it's not too much of a lift on the back like you would see in a Seoi Nage, but uh, there is loading on the back for sure, as you can see from the photo, but it cuts down. Uh, using the sleeve grip and the belt grip. The belt grip will create a great assist to the arm because uh, cutting on the lapel and the arm or only on the arm uh, needs a lot of timing and needs a lot of uh, sudden explosiveness down. So you see Seo Otoshi here. Uh, one knee or two, it does not matter, but from the picture you saw, it was a, more like a standing variation of Seo Otoshi. Uh, but I would say if it was done today with the kneeling down and you really want to take them over, it would be a Seo Enage, uh, nothing more. But if you remain with a straight back, as you saw in the photo, and just move a bit to the side your neck and cut them down, then yeah, maybe it's a drop, not so much of a throw. But uh, nonetheless, it's something if you can add to your arsenal would be great. The next one is Tsuri Otoshi. Now, this one is interesting. This one, uh, from, from what I understood from reading the article, uh, it was going to take the place of uh, Sumigaishi in Nage no Kata, from what I believe. But later on, uh, they put Nage no Kata in the Gokyo. Um, it is still a forward throw, a sacrificing throw to the front. Uh, and I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, and we can all agree that Sumigaishi is a far more uh, technical and also efficient throw than this one. So this one is you push them to the corner, like either to the uh, diagonal left or the diagonal right. And as they uh, react forward, you actually go to your side and then throw them forward. So uh, this is something that kind of looks like Yoko Wakare, but it's not. Uh, it looks something like this. So you go slightly to the side and then you throw them forward. You don't throw to your side, as in Yoko Wakare, you throw them to your back, but you position yourself somewhat close to Yoko Wakare, and we will see Yoko Wakare in a bit. So the next one is O Yoko Wakare, or major side separation kind of looks like a foot sweep as you kind of look at it first uh, they say you put the sole of the foot uh, on the side on the ankle level uh, kind of like yoko gake and then with your arms you take them sideways so um, today this would qualify as a variation of yoko gake and we will see the variations but um in Yokogake, there's very little movement in the arm, especially in the basic form. But in Yokogake, it's mostly the arms. And let's see the basic form. So you see here the lift, and then you throw to your side. Uh, notice how it's mostly the dropping of the weight and also the hands doing all the work. But in the photo that we just saw, it's you're using the sole of the foot to block their feet from going sideways. Uh, and from there, you use your arms to hurl the same way here. So let's see a competition example. Uh, this is 
uh, the Mongolian judoka. It's brilliant how it's done. So notice how she flattens herself to the side and then takes her down to her side using the sleeve only. And uh, some people would look at the basic version and think it's ineffective when in fact it really is, as you see here, from a very old competition example. So she reaches for the leg and then from there she flattens herself and throws sideways separating. So here is another one. So it says here, Yoko Wakare. However, um, the way he was gripping the first one, it kind of looks similar. And it says you block as in, as if you're doing Yoko Gake. But here it's sleeve and the lapel. And with the sleeve, you push it to the, to the ribs, kind of like doing a foot sweep, but you sacrifice yourself to the side in Yoko Gake. But here in the Yoko Wakare, it's obviously you saw it's much different so in o yoko wakare it's the competition examples that we saw but more to the side and blocking the foot as if we are trying to sweep so let's take a look at yoko gake and see um, why the o yoko wakare is simply a variation of it so here you see not much work with the arms this is the basic form but it's mostly about really slapping the ankle with the sole of your foot and then you take them down the the sleeve, it's simply pushed, as you see here, to the side, and then you go down. Now, if you were to do that with a big, big pull on the side, as you saw here, uh, it's far more effective and you can actually do in randori. It's a bit different than to just really push that sleeve towards their ribs. So this one here, it might look like Sasai, but it's actually Yoko Gake. But uh, instead of throwing them to the front, this can also be a O Yoko Wakare. You can actually go to the side, overhooks, underhooks, etc. You can do it with no gi easily. Now, the final one is, it might seem a little bit obvious, but it's a debated technique. So where is, you know, uh, knee on belly in judo? So here, this 1929 picture, I believe, it says here on the bottom, it's by Oda Tsunetane himself. Um, you can see the knee on the uh, solar plexus. And then here, another one from the side. You can see it better. So today, uki gatame, uh, we have it in a different uh, way, kind of like an S mount, what they call in jujitsu today. But this one here is the basic form. Um, I would say this one with a cross face, they will not hold for 20 seconds. They will be tapping almost immediately because if done correctly, this can be used as a strangle. And if you're pulling the sleeves towards you while really digging down the knee and the solar plexus, they will not last long. So this is what is qualified as an uki gatame today. So it looks like you're trying to go for an arm bar, but then you grab the belt or the skirt, and then you transition into what is called an S mount. It's a floating uh, hold because of the buttocks are are lifted off the ground. It's not like the others where you have, you know, your four uh, directions anchored, your elbows and knees or your legs. But here you can see there's a floating element and also knee on belly is the same. Anyone in jujitsu who does a lot of knee on belly will tell you that they feel like they're almost like they're hovering or floating. So hence the name. Um, so if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. Check the link for this Kodokan article. It's, it's a big article. It has the uh, All Japan competition, and this is included somewhere in the middle. So take your time and read it and uh, enjoy the pictures. This was Shadi, and thank you for listening.